The run game's not too complicated for them. You know, they got to have some natural vision, and there's some things we work on every day fundamentally. But where their real thinking comes in, and they have to be sharp guys, is the pass protection thing. Any chance uh, Buddha gets his hands on the ball at some point <laughs> on offense? No, we're asking. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's always that chance. But again, you know, Buddha again has not even been on offense, and he's already played the most reps of anybody in our team. So here, here we go again. You know, he's so valuable at the other stuff. And do we have other guys that can maybe do what he does? I know he'd probably like his hands on the ball. But again, I keep going back. It's a long season. He's already doing a ton for us. How much has Tony Tupo meant to this team? Not just on the field, but away, obviously, as a team captain. Yeah, I think when any time, I think any time you mention anybody as a team captain, you already know there's, there's going to be a lot going on behind the scenes. And, you know, for a guy uh, that hasn't played a, a ton of snaps, I think that always just speaks volumes of the type of person and what his teammates think of him. You know, it's one thing for a guy that's your best player to be a team captain. You know, I think sometimes guys can get away with that, you know, and make it up for it on the field. But I think it really can mean a lot. Um, I think the team captain thing is, means a lot any way you cut it. But, you know, certainly for a guy that hasn't gotten a ton of reps, hasn't been a marquee guy, I think it says a lot. Chris, what's, what's your take on the, the right tackle position right now and the yeah. battle between James and McGarry? And is it important that one of those guys really establish themselves? I don't think it's important that. I hope we have two young guys that keep progressing and, um, you know, keep developing, and we have two good answers there. That's me as the head coach. Uh, you know, Coach Tross might have a little bit of a different uh, opinion on that. I keep going back to I like to play a lot of guys, and you're going to need a lot of guys. So for me to just have one guy and say, this guy's clearly the guy, uh, you know, maybe that's good because he's playing at a high level, but I want them both playing at a high level, and I want both guys getting some time. How, how does that affect maybe the continuity and the communication with ideally with a starting five? I think it, it, it can a little bit. I think it may fit, uh, affect guys inside a little bit more, the centers and guards with all the fit that they're doing every single play. Not that the guard and tackle don't fit, but um, – uh, you know, I, I think if a guy knows what he's doing and plays it in a detailed fashion and manner, uh, I think you can use multiple guys. This is kind of kind of out there, but uh, Wall Street Journal had a story recently that quoted a bunch of NFL executives saying that this most recent quarterback draft class was as unprepared or uneducated in terms of basic defensive fronts and questions yeah. that they asked them. Yeah. Seems like most college coaches say that quarterbacks coming out of high school are more prepared than ever yeah. to play in college. I'm just I'm wondering if, yeah. if you have a take on that. And if you know, I, I think one thing that's different. I think the college game and the pro game at the quarterback position are different. And I mean, it just is. It's just they huddle up, they take the ball from under center, which is different from you know. I was at a camp. This was a year ago, and I was kind of helping out with the quarterbacks. I wasn't leading the drill. And one of the coaches had everybody taking a snap under that, and they were all doing it. And it just dawned on me. We had about, there was probably 15 quarterbacks in there. And I said, how many of you guys have ever taken a snap under center? Not one guy raised his hand. And so you start with that. The second thing I think is a huge thing is, is guys don't call plays anymore. You know, they say two words maybe to the old line. So, and they call plays in the NFL. And so what I think that the college coaches have done, a lot of them, is they simplified the game for that quarterback to play how it needs to be played in college. And it's a different game for the most part um, in the NFL in terms of how they're directing traffic and re redirecting protections and all those type of things. And when the quarterback can sit there from morning, noon, and night, all during the week, and carry that burden, you know, that's what they're going to do. And so it'll be interesting to see how it goes. But, you know, we've kind of always been a little bit different. You know, we, we put a lot on our quarterback, and he does call some plays, and sometimes he doesn't. But I, I can kind of see where they're coming from. How much freedom does a guy like Jake have right now, considering he's preparing for his third game ever in college? Well, there, there's certain things we're definitely checking, and certain times we help him out with that. Um, but again, our limiting factor is not our quarterback on offense. It's really the group. You know, how much, can this, how much new stuff can the group handle from week to week? We know Jake's going to be pretty solid with, with most of it. I mean, he really is. Um, he spends probably twice as much time or three times as much time than anybody else on the entire team, you know, studying things. And, and so that gives him, and he needs to, because it all is kind of driven through him on offense. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.